out one funny thing. That if you ask a bunch of people who have a, even a little experience in how computers work, and if you ask them how computers store data, almost all of them is smart enough to say zero and one. But what if the next question you asked him was, well, then how do you save Hello World in zeros and ones? Or even more harder, a picture or maybe even a video or your favorite show. If you're thinking about it and you don't have an answer still, then watch this video and you'll see what's inside your computer and how to take it apart. For this, we'll take apart my old computer. How your computer handles information and how it stores it. How to convert letters, information, and words into zeros and ones. What computer elements are slow and what are fast and why. And many in other information that will make you friends with computers. And and by the end of this video, you'll not think that computers are magic. All right, let's get started. First, we'll take a screwdriver and, and uncover the elements in a computer. But don't do this with your home computer or especially with your parents' work laptop. of a computer is pretty easy to access. It's the HDD, or the hard drive. You might have also heard of SSD. We will talk about the difference in a second. A hard drive is the main storage of your computer. Something like a storage for my Lego parts. The HDD is where your computer stores all your programs, books, games, puzzles, and videos. You can easily connect this hard drive to another computer and access information that's stored on it. As I mentioned, there may be two types of hard drive. The HDD has mechanical parts and has a few platters on top, laid on top of each other, and these platters are made out of magnetic material, and they divide it into billions of tiny areas. Each of those areas can be independently magnetized to store one or, or demagnetized to store zero. And I'm so proud that one of the people who invented the key one of the key components to a hard drive was born in Ukraine, which is where I was born, born in and, and is from Ukraine, which is where I'm from. SSD doesn't have any platters or mechanical parts. It's made out of just electronic components. This is why SSD is much faster than HHD. Let's keep on digging inside. The next component that can be easily found is an RAM, or a Random Access Memory. A RAM is a huge set of small boxes which all can store zero or one. The main difference between RAM and HHD is that RAM works only when power is on. Right when you turn your computer off, the RAM will erase all the data that it saved, but the HHD will still save all of the data. The RAM is way faster than the HHD, but has way less capacity than the HHD. But what's the purpose of this type of memory? Okay, let's go back to my room and my Lego blocks. As you remember, this big box is like... It's like a HHD, but for Legos. But let's say I'm building a Lego car. I don't need all the parts to build it, right? I only need some specific parts. For example, wheels or other parts for the car. So from the box, I got the 
parts I thought I would need for the car and put them in a small box next to me. And now I'm building and I don't have to, for every part, go look, go look in the big box, find it in about 10 minutes, then put on. The RAM works in a very similar way. It takes some data from the HHD and takes it to itself so it's closer to the process processor and it runs quicker. Now we're getting closer to the computer brain processor or CPU. And exactly here is the CPU. And by the way, this, if you wonder what it is, it's the cooling fan. Because particles in from working so much in the computer, the particles can get pretty hot. And now let's get to the processor. For this, we first need to take off... Um, unscrew the cooler because the cooler is because this metal rod is connected to the cooler uh which and which the metal rod is connected to this which we have to take off This is a processor. You could have heard the uh, processor CPU has 2 gigahertz or 2.3 or 2.5 or 2.7. Well, what does this all mean? 1 gigahertz means 1 billion operations per second. Can you imagine this number? Sometimes people don't realize how big this number actually is. People tend to understand things and numbers we use every day. But people don't use billions every day, unless you're a billionaire who counts his money every week. So to better understand how big a billion is, let's use the unit we use almost every day and know very well, seconds. One second is just one Mississippi, right? 60 seconds is one minute. One million seconds is 11 days. But 1 billion seconds is 32 years. Did you understand the difference now between 1 million and 1 billion? All of these elements are placed on a motherboard. A motherboard, to, a motherboard allows all these elements to communicate with each other. Okay, now you know how the, a computer stores zeros and ones. But is it really helpful to store only zeros and ones? And how to store Hello World or Zacuac on my computer? To understand it, let's first talk a little about numbers. If we write, for example, one, two, three next to each other, we're going to know it's 123, not one, two, three. But why? Because there's a specific pattern. If you write two and five next to each other, then that will be 25. If you write 2 and 5 with the space, then that will be 2, 5. Knowing this pattern, it's very easy to find the place value of numbers. For example, 324. So in, in the decimal counting system, we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. What next? There's no more digits to count further except for 9 and 0. So to count on, we just add one more place for a digit. Same with nine, when you count up to 99. We need another place to count on further. Since a computer only knows ones and zeros, it can only count using those two digits. So, let's count using ones and zeros. Zero will obviously be zero. One will obviously be one. What will be two? We just add another place, like in the decimal system. 
three will be one one. And now for four, we need to add another space. And in the binary system, there's also a pattern. In the binary system, every column represents a number, like one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, and so on. Maybe you'll think that zeros and ones are not much of a powerful way of storing things, but believe me, I can prove you that sometimes zeros and ones are more powerful for storing even than the regular system we use right now, decimals. And to prove it, here's a cool problem to solve. Once upon a time lived a farmer who worked all year long very hard to make 1,000 jars of jam. But then came the evil witch and put poison in one of the jars. When she disappeared suddenly, she left behind her 10 evil snakes. But the poison will not work until 24 hours pass. And if the farmer doesn't figure out which jar has the poison in 24 hours, then all of the jars will be spread with poison. Now let's go through the answer with the power of zeros and ones or, bi or the binary system that computers use. Now knowing how the binary system works and knowing that we can sacrifice the snakes, let's assign each jar a number in the binary system. Each jar will be represented with 10 digits, which is how much snakes we have. By 10 places, we can easily get to the number 1,000. And for every snake which has a number that contains 1, we will give a tiny bit of jam from that jar. In some time, some of the snakes will die from the poison. And the ones that died in front of them will write a 1. And the ones that didn't die in front of them will write a 0. And this will be the number of our poisonous jar. Since every jar had a unique number. So with this knowledge, now you can understand how computers can handle decimal numbers. But what about words or emails or videos or images? Before I explain it to you, let's go to Scratch and write one simple program. This program works as we thought, since 10 is bigger than 5, right? Now let's change it a little. B is bigger than A. Well, let's see. Uh, well, that's correct because B is after A in the alphabet. Okay, but how about this? So it's saying that hello is bigger than bye. Can you tell me why? To understand why, Go to this website. This is the well-known ASCII chart. This table is mapping from decimal numbers to letters. ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. This is what people decided to use to represent letters by decimals. So Scratch, for example, or any other program, actually, comp when it compares two letters, it actually compares two numbers that represent this letter. You may ask, well, what about other alphabets, for example, Chinese? Or even how, what about emojis? It works the same. There's one more broader standard that's called Unicode. ASCII code is also part of Unicode. And that principle works with all types of information. For example, a photo has a lot of has tiny squares called pixels, and the pixel is represented also by numbers. And a video is just many, many pictures going through very, very fast. Of course, a computer has many more different parts, but that's not the goal of this video. 
Now, I hope you can tell anyone how, with the help of zeros and ones, you can even watch this video. Subscribe to Zach You Have to learn way more cool things, and see you later. And don't forget to smash that like button.